Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to our vodcast on respiration and the respiratory system. As you can see, respiration actually has two parts to it. A lot of people think that respiration is just breathing, but respiration includes breathing and the cell process of cell respiration. Now let's take a look at breathing. Breathing involves two processes. It involves the process of inhalation and it involves the process of exhalation. They're easy to remember because if you take a look at the first two letters, those are your big hints. So during inhalation, air is pulled into the lungs. The reason why we're pulling air into the lungs is because we need a gas in the atmosphere called oxygen. If we take a look at exhalation, the prefix EX, X usually means out. So during exhalation, air is pushed out of the lungs. So we push air out of the lungs because we want to get rid of waste gas. And this waste gas is called carbon dioxide. Because if it builds up in our system, it can be very toxic to us and make us very sick. So those are the two parts to breathing, inhalation and exhalation. Now after breathing is finished and we get the oxygen into our body, our body can then carry out the process of cellular respiration in the cells. The purpose of cell respiration is to produce energy. And we produce this energy inside the mitochondria. Now when we produce the energy, we're producing molecules called adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. So those are our energy molecules, and we'll take a closer look at cellular respiration in a little bit. However, in order to make energy, your mitochondria uses two ingredients. We use glucose, which is a sugar, and we use oxygen, which is the gas that was brought in through the inhalation of the air around us. So those are the parts of respiration and what they do. So let's take a look at the parts of the respiratory system that helps us carry out these processes. Now here's the diagram in your notes that you were supposed to have filled out and colored in. So the parts of the respiratory system include the nasal cavity, the mouth cavity, then after we get through that we have the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, the lungs, the bronchioles, the alveoli, and the diaphragm. So if you want to check your answers you can just pause this video for a few moments and then check your answers with the notes that you have in addition to whether you labeled the parts correctly and colored them correctly. But we're going to take a closer look at how these parts work and what they do and what they look like. So here's a more realistic picture of the respiratory system inside of the human body. First we're going to start off with our major primary pathway for the air and that's called our nasal cavity. Now the nasal cavity does three things to the air. One, it filters it with the nose hairs inside the nose. Two, it warms the air, and then three, it also moistens it with the mucous membrane inside of our nose. Our secondary pathway for air is our mouth, and we can breathe through our mouth if we need to. However, where the nasal cavity and the mouth cavity meet, that's called our pharynx. Pharynx is basically another word for the throat. That's where the air, the liquids, and, and solids that we eat all meet and mix together and move down on through. However, food and water and other liquids will go down through the esophagus into the digestive system, but air is going to pass through a different pathway. Once the air passes through the pharynx, we're going to come up to another structure, and this structure is called the larynx. And the larynx houses the vocal cords that we have in our bodies. So the larynx is also known as the voice box, or even more commonly known as the Adam's apple. So as you breathe air out, the air is going to vibrate your vocal cords, creating sound, which is your voice. Now when we're breathing air in, it's going to pass through the larynx with very little sound and then end up in a tube called the trachea. The trachea is a tube made of cartilaginous rings that stays open, so this way air can constantly pass through. Let's take a closer look at the bronchi. So here's our trachea again, and as you can see, the trachea splits off into two parts. And the reason why it splits off into two parts is because we have two lungs. Now the bronchi tubes are going to then enter the lungs and then turn into smaller tubes called the bronchioles. So the air is going to go through the trachea, then through the bronchi, and then into the bronchioles. Now the bronchioles are going to continue to branch off inside of your lung 
until they start to form grape-like clusters called alveoli. And this is what the alveoli look like. So here's your bronchiole, and then it branches off into the alveoli structures here. The alveoli are the air sacs in which the air is going to sit, and, as you can tell, the alveoli are covered in capillaries. So this is the site of gas exchange, and we'll talk about gas exchange in a little bit. But as we talked about pulmonary circulation, pumping blood from the heart to the lungs, this is where the oxygen is picked up and the carbon dioxide is dropped off. So these are the parts of the respiratory system. Now let's take a look at the three steps of the respiration process in our bodies. Okay, so first we're going to start with step one. And step one involves breathing. In order to make the energy, we have to get oxygen into our body, and that's what breathing does. So our breathing is controlled by a muscle called the diaphragm. And this diaphragm is going to contract and relax, which brings in air and forces air out. So if you take a look here in the inhalation diagram, you'll notice that the diaphragm is actually dropping down. And if you think about it, that makes sense because if you take a deep breath, you'll notice that your rib cage pushes out and it needs to push out because your lungs are, in, are filling with air. So just like a balloon is being filled with air, the, your lungs are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until they are completely filled with air. So since the lungs are getting bigger, we need to make more space for them. As a result, your diaphragm drops down. That's the muscle contraction. And when you exhale, what's going to happen is that your rib cage is going to come back in and your lungs are going to get smaller. So you don't need as much room. And because you don't need as much room, you can have your diaphragm push up. So you have to remember that during inhalation, the diaphragm contracts. And that contraction, think about it, the diaphragm being pulled down, just like muscle contractions pull on your bones. And the during exhalation is the opposite. We have the relaxation of the diaphragm that pushes the air out. So once we have the oxygen in our body, we can now move on to step two, which is the gas exchange in the alveoli. So what's going to happen is we take a deep breath and that air is going to travel all the way down through our respiratory system. And then that air is going to enter into our lungs, supplying our lungs with oxygen. Now, again, as we learned in pulmonary circulation, oxygen poor blood enters the lungs. So because there's a high concentration of oxygen in the lungs and a low concentration of oxygen in the blood, the oxygen is going to move into the blood through the process of diffusion. So oxygen gas enters the blood. Now on the flip side of that, oxygen is now leaving the lungs and going into the blood. However, your oxygen poor blood is bringing in a lot of carbon dioxide. So that's what these cells are bringing into the lungs. So since you have a high concentration of carbon dioxide on your blood cells and a low concentration inside of your lungs, your carbon dioxide is then going to enter the lungs. And then we exhale it out. So there's our gas exchange. Just like you were to exchange anything with a friend, what you would do is you would give them something and they would give something in return to you. So if you're lending a video game to a friend, you would give them a video game and in exchange they would give you a video game that maybe you wanted to play. Well, gas exchange is the same thing, except we're talking about oxygen gas and carbon dioxide gas. We have the oxygenated blood moving through the body and then transferring that oxygen to the body cells that need it. And when that oxygen is transferred to the body cells, we can now move on to step three. But before we take a look at step three, let's watch an animation on how gas exchange works inside of the alveoli. These are air sacs in a lung and an adjacent blood vessel. Blood delivers oxygen to other cells in the body. Blood also carries the cell's waste, such as carbon dioxide, back to the lung. The blood pumped into the lungs has more carbon dioxide than the air in the lungs. Air breathed into the lungs has more oxygen than the blood. Diffusion occurs as oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules move from an area of greater concentration to one of lesser concentration. Thus, oxygen molecules diffuse into the blood and are carried to the cells of the body. Carbon dioxide molecules diffuse into the lungs and are exhaled when you breathe out. So boys and girls, that's how gas exchange is done inside of the lungs. Now once we've exchanged the gases and got the oxygen inside of the body, as we saw in the video, the blood cells took the oxygen away 
and they're going to bring it to all the body cells and drop off the oxygen. This is where step three begins. Now step three involves a process of cellular respiration. So here's the equation for cell respiration. The materials that you need in order to carry out cell respiration include one glucose molecule, and that's the C6H12O6 molecule, and you need six oxygen molecules. Now what's going to happen is that this reaction, the oxygen, combining with the glucose is going to occur in this organelle here and as we said before this is the mitochondria. And the mitochondria as we learned earlier this year is also known as the powerhouse of the cell because this is where the energy is made. So as this reaction goes on what's going to happen is you're going to produce six carbon dioxide You're also going to produce six water molecules, and these are waste products that we breathe out. You don't see carbon dioxide gas, however, you will see the water molecules when the air gets cold. So when you exhale, you see that fog in front of you, and that's the water vapor that's being produced by cellular respiration. However, we get rid of those wastes, and we keep the good stuff behind, which would be the 36 ATP molecules of energy that's produced. So that's cellular respiration. To summarize this all up, let's fill out this last part here at the bottom. Breathing is the movement of the chest to pull oxygen into the lungs and remove wastes, which is the CO2 or carbon dioxide. Once the oxygen is in the lungs, the oxygen will then pass from the lungs into the cardiovascular system. So it's going to go into the vessels and then travel inside of the blood. Now the red blood cells in the blood are going to carry oxygen to the rest of the body. Once the body gets the oxygen that it needs, the oxygen is then used to release energy from the glucose inside of the mitochondria. Once we get that energy, we can then use that energy to do various things. And this whole reaction is called cellular respiration. Well, that concludes the vodcast on respiration. Thank you so much for your time.